We're here in the thick of it in the playoffs now across most of the major regions, except for LCK, which has won last week before we enter into the bracket stage. And so we got a lot of exciting upcoming matches, but perhaps maybe not the best odds for this week. We also uh, took some serious L's thanks to Team Liquid and Breon this past week, Thorin. <laughs> it was a rough one. Coming off a very good week this week. First time ever we filled the bet of the week. Yeah, first time ever we failed the the match of the week. I mean, that it was, was a pretty big underdog win, though. To be fair, I mean, wasn't wasn't they on like two point five odds or something ridiculous? So it was yeah, a pretty big upset. Yeah, it was a pretty big upset, and also you know, Team Liquid massively underperformed based on expectations. You know, we'll go over it. We were down about fifteen hundred last week, uh, and in spite of that, we were actually betting on the favorites for all of these matches. So sometimes it just goes that way. As we take a look here, obviously we uh, we bet in favor of Breon. They were the favorites in both of their matches. We also had a parlay bet on them just a little bit to see if they could win both of them. Obviously, these matches were extremely important for Breon to make playoffs, so we thought they might, in fact, step up. But they went back to their old tendencies, throwing extremely winnable games where they had leads. It was it was a sad and disappointing way for them to effectively close out their season, barring some sort of miracle run in the last week of competition. And we also had the very disappointing uh, performance by Team Liquid, especially from APA, who looked absolutely desperate to make plays in these games. He uh, he was kind of throwy, seemed like he was trying way too hard to win and made some very unfortunately overly aggressive plays. As you can see, we also took a flyer on TSM just because they had 3.5 odds of winning, which, you know, they almost did. Almost happened. <laughs> almost yeah. happened. Almost, they almost happened. They almost happened. And we did actually win one, which is the DRX game. We got at 3.2 odds versus T1. Uh, so they did pull off the upset there. But it was it was most of the games that we put these 500 on where we were picking the favorites. You know, one of those goes a different way and uh, we would not have lost by anywhere near as much. But sometimes you just get a little bit unlucky. You know, I have noticed a trend that when we pick the favorites, Thorin, they tend to all lose. That happened in the first week <laughs> that we came back and did competitive edge as well. Whereas some of the weeks where we picked a lot of the underdogs, uh, we've we've actually done very, very well. So all to say, definitely a bit of a bummer. Um, and we only have four matches, as you can see below, selected for this week. A lot of the playoff matches might be fun to watch, but the odds are very one-sided. So it's hard unless you really believe an underdog is going to win, which seems unlikely in some of these scenarios, that we are going to be able to get some, I would say, significant value. Uh, especially because some of the T1 games, now people know that Faker is likely coming back this week, which has been a characteristic. I do think that T1 series versus Live Sandbox, you can get pretty good odds if Faker is going to be back. But we'll we'll get to that one a little bit. Let's start off with an LCS playoff game. It is TSM versus Dignitas. And based on their performance against EG and Dignitas' end of the season, you have to feel real good about TSM being at Almost 1.6 odds in this series because Dignitas I mean, probably has been are sad. the better team. Yeah, probably are the better team. Yeah, I think TSM at least has stepped up uh, towards the end of the season and and certainly into the playoffs in their in their match versus EG. The problem with Dignitas is that a lot of their bright spots were Rich's potential MVP performance that fell off dramatically. You know, Santorin and Jensen really have never gotten it together in terms of their 2v2 synergy. Um, the swap of of Poom for Diamond hasn't really been a, a, that noticeably effective. Like, sure, they have a few less int moments from the support position, but they also might have lost something in terms of synergy and shot calling with this roster. So I don't think there's a really good reason to believe that Dignitas should win this match. And so TSM at 1.6 looks very attractive in light of that. Um, no, I think so. So we are, we'll go back. We, we will put, uh, we will put 500 onto TSM. Hopefully the favorite with relatively good odds will actually pull through with us this time. Uh, as opposed to the last week's horrendous performance. And we can get some value there. Now I'm curious, Lauren, about your thoughts on this one. So, the scenario between T1 
and Liv Sandbox is intriguing because Liv Sandbox is desperate for a playoff seed, right? They're in prime position to do that. If they can win this match, they will all but lock it up. Actually, they will lock it up, I'm pretty sure. Whereas T1, even if they have Faker back, they're not going to move out of that fifth place position. So they won't be desperate to play. They may be a little bit more experimental um, in a week that doesn't matter. If they have strategies, they may not show them because they may be wanting to save them for the playoffs. Whereas Live Sandbox is going to want to, you know, they really would love to win this one and secure the sixth and final playoff seed for themselves. So do you think that Faker's sudden return, e bearing in mind that T1 didn't look great even before Faker left, do you think that this is the time to get T1 or is 1.5 odds not quite enough to do it for you? The problem is I'm not a huge Liv Sandbox fan, but I do think odds of almost 2.4 in these circumstances are worth it. Like even if okay. Faker returns as a world where it's like a 2-1 Liv Sandbox win or something like, I, that's the problem. I don't think the odds are low enough, uh, high enough rather for T1, like 1.5. Like, I can't, I can't reliably know they'll win. Like, even if Faker comes back, people are just acting like that will fix everything. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he instantly walks in and they're back at winning 90% of the games. Like, this is exactly the sort of opponent that could steal one from him. I think it's, I think it's fine to take the underdog for this one. Yeah, it really is just the motivation and the stakes for me, right? Like, Liv Sandbox... Oh, wait, here's another angle. Even if Faker fixes some aspects of T1, some of the players might still play bad individually. Like, some of them look a bit shook, mate. Yeah, I, all the rest of the, I mean, the Gumiyushi's been the only consistent player so far this split, especially after Faker is left. And maybe the mentality, you know, comes back, but it's it really just is irrelevant to T1's fortunes. So it it does make it seem like they may not be playing their hardest until they get into playoffs and kind of reintegrate Faker into the active roster of this lineup. So I guess, I guess you've won me over. I'm tempted just to put, you know, a small flyer, on to live sandbox. Maybe we put, you know, 200, 200 USDT on this matchup and, and see how it goes because it's not like this is going to return T1 to the amazing form that they had in the spring split, right? There've been problems all, you know, all summer. And we also just don't know how not injured Faker is anymore. I don't think it's realistic to believe that he is going to be a hundred percent physically coming into this game after only a few weeks off. He's coming back because they need to get some games in before they go to playoffs with him so that they can work the kinks out of the system before they try and make a world's qualification run. There might even be a world where they don't even play him all the games. Maybe they play him a game and Popey a game and they, you know, maybe they do that. Who even knows? Yeah, I'm not sure what the call up and call down rules are from the challenger. So that might be a possibility, especially later in the week. So it really does seem like. And it, like you say as well, remember that's the last match that T1 plays in the regular split. So there's it, the winning doesn't actually do anything for you. In fact, you could even argue they shouldn't show anything for the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I think that is that's a huge factor here. That's a huge factor. Um there are some other matches that are occurring in the LCK. You know, if you are a really big believer in Hanwha Life, they do have 3.2 odds versus Gen G. I don't think that they are going to be overcoming Gen G, so even I wouldn't take those odds. I think that that's very slim chance of happening, especially since Gen G is still motivated to win to potentially take the first seed. Uh, within the LCK, depending on KT's success. And over in the LCS, Team Liquid versus 100 Thieves is 1.387 for Team Liquid and 2.7 for 100 Thieves, which I had, if I had any belief in 100 Thieves, Thorin, I would take this one. But if you look at how Team Liquid lost, like Quid is not going to dunk on APA like Palafox did. You know, he also is a rookie player. Uh, he may have the same nerves that we saw from APA. Uh, and also just, you know, Closer has been so miserably bad this split that I just don't think that 100 Thieves can actually take this win. So I believe Team Liquid would win and there's not really that good of odds. And I also just, you know, I'm scared about Team Liquid's inconsistency in their performance. So feels like riskier than necessary for for these level of odds. So that that hasn't been too inspiring to me which as we proceed down the week moves us to the next LCK match we'll be discussing, which is D plus at 1.79 versus Hanwha life at 1.986. Now I take Hanwha life here because they're on the up and up and they're, these are pretty good odds when I think they're a favorite in this matchup. 
If you, especially if you think they're a favourite. I mean, I would say at worst it's a 50-50 anyway. So taking the one with the better odds is usually better there anyway. And as you say, like, Dan one never really ever got it together, this split, whereas actually Hanwell is actually making sort of a like, late run. Like, as Basically, as T1 fell off, they sort of replaced them as like an actually interesting team in the league. Yeah, and I think in spite of Zekka's kind of limited champion pool, at this point in time, like he is basically preferring to play. I mean, Yone is banned against him, and then he plays Azir or Tristana for the most part with the Otakali game sprinkled in here and there. Uh, but Grizzly, while he is, he basically is a jungler that has just avoided mistakes in the early game rather than being very active in playmaking and farms into a carry position late. So you might think that, oh, this is Canyon's opportunity to abuse a relatively new up-and-coming jungler i think grizzly you know his job on this roster is just to provide a bridge to the late game while not really affecting the lanes or interacting with the enemy jungler whatsoever and the lanes have been stable enough in hanwha life to get them into the late game where they shine and unfortunately d plus makes a lot of mistakes in the mid and late game in terms of macro and that's where they oftentimes lose. Like they lose one of two ways. Either Canyon completely runs it down um, or they make very bizarre shot calls in the later stages of the game. And that is where Hanwha life has been the strongest, right? So you really have to hit Hanwha in the mouth hard early and get big advantages to beat this team because they do have, I mean, especially Viper is still incredible in late game team fights and can absolutely carry. So it's not like you're getting the big, you know, a big advantage through deft being that team fighting late game hyper carry, which he still is. So for me, the trajectory of Hanwha is looking really good right now. And, and they have kind of filled the void that T1 left in terms of not being as good as, as Gen G or KT, but being pretty definitively the third best team in this league. So it's a little weird to see them as an underdog when the standings don't even reflect that, right? No, I think this is actually a rare example, like you say, where it's possible they're the favorite where we're going to get underdog odds. Yeah. So it's an easy one. Yep. Easy. We'll do another 500 here. And now, of course, we will be discussing our match of the week. And uh, <laughs> if you guys are wondering why the odds may be not so good, it's when I picked the match of the week between Golden Guardians and NRG. The odds were like over 1.5 for Golden Guardians when we first selected it. And as you guys know, for last three nations match of the week, if you do place a prediction on this and you win, you get an additional 10% profits on your first bet up to $100 USDT or its equivalent in esports coin, which is the renamed DJT or another cryptocurrency. Also, if you guys have been looking to play along for free, there are promotions for a limited time right now to get a bunch of esports coin just for free. And all you have to do is go to their Discord for 10,000 ESC, follow them on Twitter for 5,000, follow on Instagram for 5,000, and you just message either Mod Mail on the Discord or type in customer service on the website, and they will credit that to your account. So it's a great way to play along for free. And esports coin can also be transferred uh, to real cryptocurrencies. So there's a way to to get money out of that as well. Um, so why I picked this match is because I thought it was really great odds for Golden Guardians. You know, at 1.5, I was hyped that I think NRG won. It's the way that they won. Like, do we think that Palafox is going to dominate Gory? I don't think so. Like, Gory has been one of, if not the best mid laners within the LCS for this entire year. His synergy with River has been exceptional. Licorice has had a massive revival this season and should be able to handle Dokla in the top lane. It just feels like the way NRG beats Team Liquid by preying on some of their less experienced players just doesn't apply here. And there's not going to be a pop-off Palafox performance. Like in this game. Yeah, basically the the fool's gold in the liquid pick was obviously that we were hoping APA would play like he did in the regular split. And because he's remember, he's barely played at all in LCS, guys. Like he only came in part way through this split. Like, I don't blame players. It's like the Noah guy when in LEC he bombed the first group stage game. Like, it's fair enough. You're like a rookie, like you're in essentially like not a playoff setting for him, but like a more important game that you never played in before. So, like, I can forgive that. The difference is, like you're saying, the Golden Guardians lineup is established. We know who these guys are, they've been around a while now and they quite frankly have they ever looked bad i don't think they've ever looked bad mate they might have at times been just above average but the flaw in this team is actually pretty good like the difference is like here's the thing 
if I really believed in NRG, I'd say the NRG odds are the ones. But not only do I not really believe in them, I also think this is actually the sort of team they just can't beat in a full best of five. They can win games. I don't think they can beat... They, if they can, it's going to be 3-2 again, mate. So I think Golden Guardians wins this one. Yeah, I'm I think... pretty confident. Yeah, unfortunately, like, normally, as we say, when the odds are just a little over 1.3, we don't typically like to do that on the favorites. But because you can get an additional 10% profit, yeah. might be worth it uh, in this yeah. particular instance. As I said, I selected this one before the odds that kind of skewed this way. And, you know, I think NRG is a team that can probably pay place, you know, potentially even third place in LCS. Like, mm -hmm. I, But they they do make a lot of macro mistakes in the late game. Um, they, they haven't been anywhere near as consistent as cloud nine or golden guardians and golden guardians realistically has a shot at taking the LCS title. Like, I don't think that's outrageous, especially if, if M and S has some dicey performances and playoffs, you know, he's not, he hasn't been the most consistent player. So while the ceiling of cloud nine might be higher, the floor of golden guardians is very, very high. Um, well, so people LCS. remember when NRG was CLG, it was the same story. They could always like get these that counter logic wins off on best of ones, but they would always let you down. Normally, they're the ones who lose three two. You know, they'll yeah, be yeah, in a yeah. where they should have won. They loved. So I also think they're a hard team to to bet on anyway. So this is a good underdog pick. I, I like the goal. Like you say, especially because of the match of the week part. I think this is just a slam dunk that Golden Guardians wins this. <laughs> yeah, and I I feel much more confident about this than the the liquid one that we did last week. I mean, we took that one, but. Didn't work out. 500 here onto Golden Guardians. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, we'll continue our role with, with the match of the week and be right again. Uh, again, last week was the first one we had gotten wrong, even though we had picked some pretty big underdogs at times yep. for the, the match of the week. Uh, we had already always gotten that one right. So if you guys are wondering kind of where we're at with some of the other ones, like, you know, KT versus Live Sandbox, KT's at 1.090. No point in, in doing that one. Oh, don't bother. <laughs> you know, Cloud9, 1.218 to 3.716 for EG. Maybe it's worth taking a flyer on EG for that one. It's not outside of the realm of possibility that Cloud9 has a bad series and, and EG takes that, especially with 3.7 odds for EG. And then the LPL finals. Or maybe, or maybe for that one, what you could do is you could do like a handicap that like EG will win games or something. You know what I mean? Like you could sure. just essentially do like Cloud9 won't 3 0 or whatever. Yeah, something that's like probably that fair. Might not be a bad one because I feel like they could drop games. I'm with you on that. Yeah, that's fair. And then unfortunately, the LPL finals are JDG at 1.29 to 3.2 for LNG, which. It, is no you, point. I mean, you might look at you might look at it and say, wow, LNG did get awfully close, man. What if they had won game two in that best of five? Yeah. You know, LNG might. Yeah, but that was also a really particularly bad day for JDG and Kanavi in particular. And I just don't see that level of underperformance from JDG happening again. I think LNG caught them on a bad day, but LNG also is not the best team at making decisions late around their shot calling and making decisions that are in line with their team compositional strengths. So I, it really, I really do struggle to find an angle that LNG would be able to turn this around when I think it was already somewhat of a miracle that they went to five games and arguably should have won that first best of five. Like JDG is just not going to have another stinker day. I don't think. One of the reasons why Scout is justifiably the back-to-back -back MVP is because in his team, if they ever win, he has to just play lights out, basically. Whereas the reason why no one from JDG was ever going to win the MVP, even Ruler, who might be the best player in the LPL, is because there's too much help on his team. Like, the team yeah. is too stacked. So <laughs> I also get the vibe. I mean, if people don't know, not only is JDG on for the grand slam, they have never lost a best of five so far with this five-man lineup. And quite frankly, I don't think it's going to start in the final. I even get the vibe from the way the other teams play against them in these playoffs series like they know they can't win i bet these guys played them all the time in the regular split in the in the scrims and just never won I, like yeah. I, I get the vibe that will come out as the story later because like especially now it's not even blg like i think jdg is going to win this all day in my opinion yeah and i think it's not going to be as competitive as the first best of five like i i think you know what lng is going to do like they tried to big dick zika on some fiora picks versus 369 and then they played out the split push really badly and lost games that they should have won um, JDG is also just frankly a phenomenal team at playing from behind. You give them one opportunity and they will smash you and just win the game. Like they will come back from a 5,000 gold deficit, one fight and win off of that. So it's really, 
it's it's very difficult because of the concentration of talent on this team to keep them down, and because they have very. Well, no, it's, that's also the main hallmark of all the greatest teams in the history of League of Legends is you can just win team fights from behind. Yep. If you have that skill, you will always have a chance at League of Legends. Yep. Yeah, it's it's absolutely huge. So this is all to say that you know maybe if you're feeling extra lucky, you could put the flyer on on LNG. I don't feel that lucky, <laughs> and I am the I am the biggest LNG like. They already did a great job too. to make the final, man. I think that's already you know, <laughs> like, if I enough. if I'm the LNG fanboy and I'm saying this, like I would not take it. Oh, now, granted, I would be over the moon if LNG won this final because I think it would make worlds much more interesting. Because if JDG just three O's LNG here, uh, I mean they are coming in as just such an immense favorite to the world championship, regardless of what happens in the LCK playoffs. Because I don't think that you know KT or Gen G are going to have a super dominant run through that bracket, um, but. We'll have to see. So, unfortunately, I would love to be able to reasonably predict that match, uh, but I just doesn't seem like there's a lot of value there. Uh, unless, uh, unless you know, JDG somehow hits like 1.4. Yeah, maybe, maybe you take that one at that point in time. All right, guys. Well, we will see you as we continue our roll through the playoffs. Remember to subscribe to the Esports Bet YouTube channel here for more content like this, face check, and others. Thanks a lot for watching.